Hi, my name is Kelsey. I use she and her pronouns, and I am the river steward for the state of Connecticut here at the Connecticut River Conservancy, and I'm here to wish you happy fish migration. Um, initially, we had been hoping to host a number of you for an in-person tour of a fish ladder in Essex, uh, but we're changing with the times, and Steve Gephardt, who is a fisheries biologist at Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, uh, is going to take us on two virtual tours of fish ladders he recently worked on in Essex. Uh, before we get to that, a quick joke that Andy, our executive director, really likes to tell. What does a fish say when it runs into a wall? Damn. Uh, it's really not that good of a joke, uh, but Andy's the boss, so I tell it and I laugh at it. Um, and in all seriousness, uh, though we have the largest river, over 400 miles, in New England, and our watershed covers over 11,000 square miles, uh, the Connecticut River watershed is one of the most dammed watersheds throughout the whole country. Uh, this means that when we have migratory fish species come up river each year, uh, they face impediments that prevent them from getting to critical spawning habitat. So uh, in order to open up these rivers, one thing we can do, of course, is to take out dams. Uh, where that's not possible, uh, DEEP and watershed partners um, throughout all four states work to put in mechanisms like fish ladders or different types of fish passage that allow these species to reach that spawning habitat. A lot of fish species, once they've spawned, uh, will actually die in the freshwater ecosystem and thereby they, they put in um, critical nutrients into these aquatic ecosystems. So they're a critical part of our habitat and our ecosystem in addition to their own intrinsic value and beauty. Um, this world, oh, this hood, this uh, World Fish Migration Day has been postponed, but as the weather warms and the shad trees are in bloom, we're here to celebrate the return um, and migration of different fish species throughout our watershed. We here at CERC and at DEEP and throughout the whole watershed are working to um, collect data on these fish species through uh, different fish counts. If you're interested in following along, uh, Steve Gepard publishes a report every Tuesday, uh, which is available on our Facebook page. Uh, you can also volunteer with us to participate in sea lamprey surveys and river herring counts. Uh, and if that's of interest to you, feel free to check out our website at ctriver.org and follow along and have a happy fish migration season. Hi, I'm Steve Geppert of the Connecticut DEEP's Fisheries Division, and I'm here to give you a quick tour of one of the newest fishways in the state of Connecticut, the Dolan Pond Fishway here in Essex, Connecticut. We're on the Falls River, which is a tributary of the Connecticut River. And you can see behind me, the dam is quite small, short, it's four feet high, but that's enough to stop alewives, which we're trying to restore to this watershed. And that structure in the middle with the walls is the fishway. So the fishway is inside this drop structure that extends into the head pond. You can see the aluminum steep pass fishway that extends down into the slots. You can see the trash boom. I meant to say the trash rack at the front to keep trash items out. The water enters, enters the steep pass fishway with all of its veins, which slows down the water and delivers it to the bottom of the dam through the entrance where the fish can find it and enter. The stones on the wall, the facade, is just meant to hide the fishway and make this area a little more attractive to the local residents. Hi, and now we're at the next fishway upstream, the John and Jane Wiederhold Fishway at Mill Pond in Centerbrook. And this fishway is only about um, a quarter of a mile upstream of the last fishway that we visited at Dolan Pond. You can see the dam behind me. This fishway, like the last one, was constructed in 19, or yeah, right, in 2019 by the Nature Conservancy with the cooperation of Centerbrook Architect 
the owners of this facility and um, designed and built by the same parties, Nathan Jacobson and Schumach Construction. It's a great project. This is its first year and we're looking forward to seeing fish come up it. This also is a steep pass fishway, but it's much different than Dolan Pond. You can see the entrance in front of me with concrete, and then there's a ramp of steep pass that goes up to the left, a turn pool, another ramp that goes up to another couple of turn pools before it delivers fish to Mill Pond, which is a 50 acre impoundment, which is great spawning habitat for alewives. This is one of the resting pools, the first one. You can see the fish come up through the entrance up this first section of steep pass. They can both rest and turn so that they can then go up the next ramp of steep pass as they head up toward the dam. This steep pass design is aluminum with lots of veins in it and the veins slow down the rush of the water. The fish can swim right up there. They can't stop until they get to that resting pool up there. As they get near the top, there's a couple of more churn pools that are going to deliver them up to the spillway. But this turn pool in front of us is sort of unique because it has a viewing window. And if there were fish here today, which there are not, you'd be able to see them swim past the window and go upstream. So now we're at the top. You can see where the fish have come. They go past that window in the turning pool and they come up this area. And now they're at the head pond. This is the exit of the fishway with their trash rack. And now they have all of this good spawning habitat. This pond goes back for 50 acres and provides wonderful habitat for these fish to spawn and for the young to feed and grow.